Your Excellency, our Deputy President, my colleague CS Rebecca, and other government uh, officials here with us, the leadership of KEPSA, Flora, Carol, and the captains of industry, all protocols subsided. Good morning. Your Excellency, with 75% of our population below the age of 35, we truly are a very young, a very youthful nation. It is a demographic profile or demographic reality that offers us opportunity to reap what we call demographic dividends. Because this is a demographic <coughs> cohort that is full of energy, full of valve, socks, knowledge, training and education like a sponge, ready to learn, innovative, the dream, the passionate. But that notwithstanding, Your Excellency, the reality is that a majority of our young people today are largely disillusioned, they're dispirited, and even disenchanted. I was looking at the statistics of the last elections, and the IEBC says of the 22.1 or so million Kenyans who registered to vote, 39.8% of those fell in this cohort of the youth. And the IBC goes on to note specifically that those figures represent a drop of 5.2% from the statistics of 2017. Meaning that there is even a drop of passion and interest in the political space. And the reality is that our young people have risen to be disillusioned, to be disenchanted. Because when you look at the realities of employment, for instance, we release 800,000 graduates into the labor market every year. Of these 800,000 young people, the formal employment space only takes 20% which leaves 80% of this to the informal sector. And so we have an incredibly high rate of unemployment and underemployment. And we begin to understand why these young people become disenchanted. But the truth the saving grace is that this particular government, the government of Kenya Kwanzaa, has a window of opportunity. And the window of opportunity is that these young people have faith in this government. In fact, when you look at the statistics again, and go back to the statistics of the last elections, the Kenya Kwanzaa government is a government largely elected by young people. And repeatedly, even as we did our polling, we could not fail to pick out the reality, the fact that the largest portion of our support base was the youth of Kenya. And so they have faith in a president they love to call the chief hustler because of having feeling a connection too. And they have a lot of passion for a deputy president they have christened Rigiji. <laughs> These are not just names that our young people have ascribed to their president and their deputy president. For me, they are statements of faith, they are statements of trust, and it, that is what I call the window of opportunity to mine and to harvest 
this faith, this trust that the young people have placed in this government. I have the privilege of having been given the responsibility by His Excellency the President and the Deputy President to manage the corner of government that has been characterized as the Ministry of Youth Affairs, Sports and the Arts. And I want to tell you I am under express instructions of the President and the Deputy President here to help manage the affairs of young people, not outside the box, but entirely without the box, completely without the box. His Excellency the Deputy President was reminding me just a moment ago, you have to do it completely differently. And I'll do it, sir. Completely differently. Because that is what our young people expect. They expect a completely different mindset and a completely different approach. I was listening very keenly as the panel of young people here spoke to us. And I was particularly struck by the words of Beatrice. A young lady told us she's from Kibra. And in her concluding remarks, Beatrice tells us they do not want tokenism. They don't want handouts. They don't want par parochial approaches. They want substance. They want sustainability. They want continuity. And that is why I have so much faith with the program we are launching here today, going beyond the parochial, going beyond tokenism. And so when you had His Excellency the President say, no kazim tani, it is about moving away from tokenism and moving towards substance and sustainability. The President said these words incidentally while launching the affordable housing program in Kibra where Beatrice lives. And I know that we will indeed replace tokenism with substance and sustainability. Because if you're talking sustainable programs, then you're thinking if you have a, an affordable housing program, it is not just about young people doing ilekazia mkono but you are saying, if there's going to be physical planning, then we want young physical planners to be on the table. If you have the work of architectural designs of the whole program, you want young architects at the table. You want young plumbers, electricians, and young people with technical skills to be part of this program. That is moving beyond tokenism. And so, I want to commit that um, this ministry in the overall architecture of government will be available to work with KEPSA and this whole private sector space to drive this program. And we also want to deploy the entire space of sports and the arts as you think of other innovative ways to exploit the space populated by our young people. We want to work with uh, Peter here at Safaricom to see how the Skiza platform can be a platform to unleash the potential of our young artists. And as we upload the creativity of our young people on the Skiza platform, we should be able to see how our young people can earn more from the Skiza platform. We want to engage the Communications Authority of Kenya to see how they can collect more from media platforms where the creativity of our young people is played out, how that can be transformed, can be turned into sustainable revenue and income for our artists. We want the sporting industry to be a real industry where we manufacture and we put into the market a lot of the sporting equipment that our young people use out there to brand our country. And I really want to thank Ketsam 
for this partnership. Early this year, I accompanied then presidential candidate William Ruto to a conversation in this room with KEPSA, where you shared with us the private sector manifesto. And I want to admit that that manifesto did shape the thinking that went into our the plan. <laughs> and so uh, let me just thank you for having made such an incredible input into our planning. And now you are ready to work with government in implementing the plan. Asante San. Let me conclude by saying that we'll work with you because we believe in the African saying that if you want to go very fast, you travel alone. But if you want to go very far, you travel with others. So you want to travel together, knowing that we owe our young people so much to raise their spirits and to borrow the words of Winston Churchill as he addressed the House of Commons on August 20th, 1940. Never in the history of a nation has so much been owed by so few to so many. The few of us who are in leadership owe so much to the young people of this country. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> can we all now be upstanding as it is now my singular honor and duty to welcome His Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa, Rigi G to our young people, <laughs> to address you and launch the Kenya Youth Employment and Entrepreneurship Accelerator Program. Thank you, Your Excellency Karibu, sir.